Good morning, everybody. Early to the party again. How is everyone today? I know it takes a while for you to just find the link, so I shall waffle, and hopefully, yeah, hopefully I'll get a text from the lovely Jilly. Jilly's in the room with you today. So, um, how are we all doing on this fine, groovy Tuesday? How are we? I can see there's some people watching. So hopefully I'll see the, the chat kick in. There we go. Good morning, Nancy, all the way from the States. And there we go. All clear from Jilly. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Happy Groovy Tuesday. Are we all well? Oh, look at all those lovely names coming up. So many friendly faces. Oh, it's lovely. Who have we got? We've got Bernie, we've got Helen, we've got Jane, Pamela, Ken, Julia. Good morning. Oh, and there's lovely Jilly. Super duper. Ah, oh, it's lovely to be back in the room with you all. I hope you all had a good weekend. Did you enjoy the, the Clarity Open Day Festival? My, that was fun, wasn't it? All those blogs from Grace and Barb. Um, and what about the pyjama party on Friday? That was amazing. You absolutely loved it. It was great to see so many people with their, I mean, obviously I couldn't see you had your pyjamas on, but um, it was lovely to have so many people in the room. Uh, the lovely Pat Hoskins. Good morning, Pat. I bet it's raining down in Cornwall, isn't it? It always seems to be raining down there at the moment. And um, yeah, it, it's very grey and drizzly here. But apparently the, the warm weather's on its way back. So um, we shall see, fingers crossed. So it doesn't feel like, where are we? What month are we? Are we June? Yeah, we're in June. It doesn't feel like June. It feels like autumn. So um, yeah, it was a great weekend. It was, wasn't it, Jill? So, yeah, it was great fun and it was lovely to see. Oh, no, Pat says it's sunny in Cornwall. Well, send it up this way, Pat, please. We could do with some lovely sunshine up here. And Lisa, Lisa also. Good morning, everybody. So, is it 10 o'clock? No, it's not even 10 o'clock and there's lots of people in the room. Everyone else is early to the party as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good day today and we're going to complete our beautiful Paisley project um, that we've been working on over the past few weeks. Um, we had last week and the week before we had the lovely company of Linda Williams and I learned so much and, um, and I'm going to show you what I've done and um, it's not perfect but I'm still learning as well because do you remember I said to you at the beginning I really struggled getting that beautiful um, the shading effect. So I've been working on mine over the past week and we can have a look and I'll, I'll show you what I've done and I'm quite pleased with it and I think if I'd had a little bit more time I could have perfected it a little bit more but you know what it's a piece of parchment and I'm happy with it and I think that's the main thing. We're always very self-critical of ourselves and it's it's about just going with the flow and accepting what you've got. And at the end of the day, the way I look at this, the Groovy Tuesday, it's all about learning and trying to sort of stretch ourselves that little bit further and come up with something different. So to have the, the company um, of Linda the last couple of weeks, having a week off this week, <laughs> she's uh, full steam ahead on some secret projects. And I know that she'll be working on the project that we've got coming up next week. So, um, so I thought before we get started, we'll have a little bit of a recap. And it's given everybody, we've just gone 10 o'clock. So welcome to the shack, stay home and craft, safe, happy and creative and groovy Tuesday. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. Okay, lovely. Have you got your, your hot beverage or some cold water or juice so that we can have a nice sort of chilled morning, a nice hour of just getting in the groove and chillaxing, as they say. Well, apparently that's what the youngsters say. Um, so I thought what we'll do, we'll have a bit of a recap 
And I thought I'd start off that recap from the Pergamano show last week on the craft store. The plate from Linda Williams, I gave you all a sneak peek last Tuesday and you absolutely loved it. So let's have a look. So this is Linda's It's a Wrap, the folded gate, the folded heart card. I mean, look at that. I mean, what's not to like about this plate? You've got the beautiful lily of the valley. You've got that beautiful lace effect, the sort of the ribbon effect around the outside. You've got the gorgeous corners. You've got the bows. So it, it's I'm not surprised that it sold out when it did during the second hour and <laughs> it went absolutely crazy. In addition to this plate, Linda also, oh, so clever, designed this plate, which again stands alone because of what Linda's put on there. When we look at all the different elements on there, so we've got verses on there, and it was designed to decorate the little stands. Again, I love this for infilling of a border, just taking those little hearts. And these ones here with those tiny little dots, let me bring that up closer so we can really, or if, what if I come in on this camera? I rarely use this camera, Ray glare. Okay, so when we look at this area here, these gorgeous little dots, these are perfect for practicing your white work as well. Beautiful, beautiful designs as always from Linda. And I thought I'd just have a quick recap. Oh, and don't forget, you also get, look, it wouldn't be a Linda plate without instructions, would it? So Linda guides us all the way through, gives us a little snapshot of the card that she created. And then on the reverse, you've also got the template if you wanted to print this on, to, photocopy this onto card so that you can create a piece out of card or paper to do the complete heart. Okay, and again, top tips from Linda. For me, what I really learned about this um, when we were showing this card off was about the double perforating through the two different layers. And that was, I, I well, it's obvious really, but I'd never really thought about it. So when we have a look, this was a card that Linda kindly created to allow me to demonstrate on the TV. I mean, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And then even the attention to detail, the little decorated tabs on the inside. And then when we open this card up, to have and to hold from this day forward. But it could be birthday, it could be anniversary. And I love how you've got this inlay effect so that the heart nestles beautifully within. And then because it's called the folded heart, you can see how it wraps around the back as well. And look at that as a nice finishing touch. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely stunning. And I know when I do the TV show, I, I really sort of struggle to try and get everything in. Let's just bring this round, pop it on its little stand. So if I bring this in on this camera, no, I'm not going to get it in there. Let's bring it into camera number one and we'll hold that up. But you can see now how it stands beautifully on its little stand. It's just so, so clever. And then this, oh, this piece of artwork here, look at this, absolutely gorgeous. All Linda has Pico cut all of this. Now I didn't even attempt to do that, but look, amazing. And then, isn't it fun? And look, the little personalization inside, lovingly created with you in mind. And again, you've got those beautiful car blanks. And this was the one where we did the double perforating to create, I mean, what I've done, this was the piece that I showed on TV where I'd cut out with a normal pair of scissors and then Pico cut around the outside so that you get that beautiful nestled part of it. And then if you take a piece of designer paper, so even if you're not into your colouring in on your groovy journey, you can just pop that behind it. No, just the designer paper, what a difference that can make whether you go with the, the softer side. I quite like that side. Isn't that nice? Really, really beautiful. So that was a bit of a recap on 
um, last week's Pergamano show. And it was just, it's not, I just feel very honored and very privileged to be able to show I mean, Linda, the hours that she spends on these samples, and I'm always conscious of the time on the TV and um, to be able to do it justice because they're really, I could probably do a four hour show and still not give the artwork the what it deserves. So are we all sitting comfortably then, are we? So should we have a recap on what Linda's been showing us over the last few weeks? Because it's brilliant to see on Groovy Worldwide what you've been coming up with and how you've been learning, especially that beautiful shaded work, which as I say, I struggled with. So this was my piece that I was practicing on. And so in the first week, which was episode 19, okay, Linda was showing us how to get this beautiful sort of shaded effect to create the light and the dark. Now, this was my first piece. Remember, we had a couple of pieces on the go. And I found that it was like a warm-up exercise. And Linda said that she always warms up when she's doing her white work onto a scrap of paper first, just to get the hand in. Okay. And then last week in episode 20, Linda showed us how we put the, the faux veins of the leaf in as well. And you can see this one, I'm a lot more happier on this side than I am on this side. But again, it was new to me and I know for a lot of people watching at home, it was new to you as well. So I was happy with what I was doing and learning from Linda on how to create that effect. Okay. So what I've done is I've taken my piece. Remember the piece that we created at the beginning before Linda came along and was showing us the technique. Now, I'm happy with this, but I know I can improve it. And my biggest improvement I find I need to do is to bring those lines in. See the, the black lines in the middle? They need to be a lot thinner. If I bring in my piece here, that I practiced on, you can see it's a lot thinner. But again, that just comes with confidence and just building it up slowly. And I decided on my one, I was gonna do sort of like the, the whole of the leaf in sort of, in a solid shaded white rather than a gradual. And to be honest with you, the reason I did that was because I got carried away with the shade. <laughs> and before I knew it, both ends met and I thought, oh, I've got to do it on all of them now. But again, I know up here where I went wrong because this will go in my folder to show me how I should have done it. And this will go in here, show me how I did it. Okay, so it, it's, it's all about that learning. And I'm learning just as much as you are at home as well. And it's, for me, it's all about that process. And as I say, I know these need to be a lot narrower, but I'm happy to go with the flow. Now, I've got a piece here that Linda created a while back using a beautiful daisy flower. And it was that same process. I'm looking at the back and you can see, so Linda's taken the six millimeter ball tool Okay, just how she did when we was working on the paisley side of it. This was one layer, two layer, and three layers. Okay, so again, Linda explained about using the same size ball tool several times over a period, just to slowly build up the whiteness. And then Linda reduced down to the four and a half. And again, you can see the difference now between the two, how it becomes whiter. So again, you've got the one, two, and three. Okay. So it's having something like this is a good way of practicing or just taking a shape from the paisley plate like we did to create and practice on. So as I say, this is gonna go in my folder 
And I'm going to keep this because this will be my reference of when I come back to look at doing that beautiful shading again. And next week when Linda's back in the room with us, we're going to be looking at some beautiful butterfly plates, but we'll talk about those a little bit later. And we're going to be repeating this technique, but on the wings of the butterfly. Okay, so more coffee required. So today, what I thought we'd do to finish this piece, we're not going to finish it completely, but I wanted to give you some um, ways of sort of applying colour to large areas. Now, we have covered this in the past, but if you're new, you've only recently joined us, then I thought it was a good way of sort of just recapping and having a look on how we can apply colour in larger areas. So what we're going to need, we'll, we'll get all the bits and pieces that we're going to need. Okay, so we'll give you a chance to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to practice first on some spare parchment. Okay, so if you've got a couple of sheets of your A5 parchment, then we're going to need those. Mix mats, if you've got them. So I'm using the one for oil because they come in a pair where we've got one for water and one for oil. Okay, they're the same um, sheet. So if you think, oh, I don't need one for water, you're never going to use it for water. You can still use it for oil. It's neither here nor there, as they would say. So we're going to need a mix mat. We're going to need, we've got options. I'm going to show you how to use the dorso crayons. Okay, so we've got these available. And I'm also going to be using, look, I haven't unloaded my bag yet. Ooh, I haven't tidied it up either. So we're also going to use our B pencils, our Pergolina B pencils. So I'm going to take a couple of colours out. So I'm going to go blues, purples, whites, um, what other colours? Maybe a bit of red, maybe a bit of yellow. And all I need to remember is to put them back in. They're all in numerical order, so I know exactly where they need to go. And it is the B pencils we need, the ones with the white writing on. If you have the polychromo pencils, then they'll be just as good to use as well. So we've got a selection of pencils. We've got our dorso crayons and mix mat. We need some dorso oil. It smells, makes the room smell lovely. We're going to use some tissues. Now, if you haven't got tissues, kitchen roll is just as good, but tissues is better. Tissues is, tissues are better. And what I also that I'm going to have a play with is if you've got them, is some spot on sponges. Okay, so we've got a couple of spot on sponges there. Um, what else do we need? Um, ah. As Barb says, one of our best-selling products on the website, the eraser pencil. Whether you go for the white or the pink or the double ender, then that's a good thing to use. Okay, so checklist in my head. Dum dum dum. Yes, I've got everything ready. <laughs> it's like a, a sort of an ingredients for a cake, isn't it? You get it all together. So I'll give you a few minutes just to grab all those bits because there'll be some over there, there'll be some over there. So I, I knew what I was going to be using today, so I had it all to hand. So, uh, so I'll give you a, a minute or so. I have another slurp of coffee. Oh, dear. Okay. It's lovely to see everybody in the room again today. <coughs> so where are we going to start? Okay. So Dawson, this is what I've picked up watching various uh, traditional parchers on how they've done the dorsing in the past. Dorsing is a technique where you've got your parchment and you're applying colour in large areas. But you're doing it so that you've got a smooth blend of colour and it's not harsh. You, it's, you can build up that beautiful sort of like, you could do... Um, all different colours, or you can go solid. Oh, a little bit of out of focus there. Try and keep my hands flat. Okay. 
and it's it's just getting it so that it looks nice and it doesn't look blotchy or it doesn't look um oh, how do i describe it that you've actually taken some color and plonked it on and then it just doesn't blend or or meld in together so from what i've picked up the good thing to do is to apply the dorso oil to your parchment first and that acts as like a carrier even though it absorbs into the parchment or evaporates it acts as um oh what's the word i'm stuck for my words today you you'll understand once i do it so if i take some dorso oil okay and i'm going to put a couple of drops on my mix mat smells lovely so you have a couple of options if you take your tissue and you fold it up what we want to do is create like a point okay so if you fold it into a square i i think see i'm talking cakes again it's like a, an icing bag and what you want to do is you want to fold it over so that you've got a point okay so you have choices you can take your tissue and you can dip it into your oil seeing it sucks and then you just wipe over your parchment that's the word it's, it acts as like a carrier when we apply the color okay so you can do that and put a base coat down now when we come to apply it to our project do you remember linda was saying in um episode 19 that if we want to add color to where we've done the shaded work we need to make sure that we don't really use um the dorso oil on those areas because what it does is where we've broken the fibers of the parchment down the dorso oil can sort of absorb into it and it can look very grainy okay so this is completely dry i mean it's dry as soon you can see it's got like a slight sheen on it and where you can see over here where i haven't put any okay so we've got that piece there that i've used the tissue with so i'm going to pop that to one side then i'm going to take another one and i'm going to take a spot on sponge and we're going to do exactly what barbara does where it turns it into like a mushroom and we can pick up the oil and we can wipe over in the same way so it's entirely up to you Woo! it's entirely up to you whether you want to use a sponge or a tissue okay there we go so that one's done using the tissue so it's going to give us the same type of effect so i'm going to pop that one to one side over here let's pop that out of the way and we'll bring the one in that we've taken the tissue on let's start with the pencils so if i take i'll go with a blue and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a piece of white copy paper and pop that underneath okay so we have choices what we don't want to do with a pencil you know like when we're coloring we would hold it like a pencil as if we were going to write we don't want to go on heavy with our color what we want to do is hold the pencil to the side and use the side of the pencil to apply the color okay so you can see we're just putting like a base coat down it looks really really scratchy if i bring this up slightly so you can have a look see there we go you can see it looks really really scratchy which do you remember when i do my coloring in what happens is oh, ouch oh sorry i just about to get up <laughs> to bring the camera in <laughs> i just cracked my knee on the table oh, never mind there we go let's come in really close is that going to be too no i think that'll be fine okay i bring that down a little bit there <laughs> i mean i need to tread on my foot now so that takes the pain away from your knee so again we now have options we can take our mix mat again with some oil 
put a few more drops on. There we go. And we can take our tissue that we've turned into an icing bag and I can pick up the oil. Okay. Now, do you remember with the Dorso oil, when we're working with the pencils and we're coloring in and we want to get the blending, if you use too much oil, then it can remove the color. But if I go like this, you can see, see that I've got too much oil. See how it's taking it away. So all I'm gonna do is just spread that out. And then we're gonna start to, to blend in that color. And as we move into it, you can see how the color is now softening, but I'm getting a really nice blend of color. Can we see that? I mean, it's very faint, isn't it? I wonder if I come in on this camera, does that help? Can we see that? No, we can't. Should we try a red? Let's try a red. <laughs> Okay, sides of the pencil. Let's overlay into the blue as well. Okay, and I'm not putting any pressure on. All I'm doing is just using the sides of the pencil to lay down the color. So rather than use the blue, I'm gonna turn the tissue inside out. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of oil. And then let's have a look. Yeah, we're on the overhead. So now we can start to, to blend that color. Can we see that better? Because what we want to do, we want to give a nice subtle softness to our background. Okay, and I'm going to move into that blue. And as I move into that blue, it starts to go purple where we combine both the colors together. Yeah, we can see that red a lot better. There we go. Absolutely. Okay, so we can see now how we're starting to really get a nice soft edge to it. Now I've just loaded it up with a little bit more oil and what it's done is soften down those edges. You see? So we can go around and we can take it into that blue and we can get a nice blend of the two colours together. Yeah, we can see that. Okay, so that's one way of using the pencils to create a larger background color. Okay, so let's take it, let's, you know, let's go for it. Let's go for a bit of purple as well. I know the blue and the red make a purple. But again, let's, let's experiment. After all, it's only a piece of parchment. Okay, and I'll stick with my red part of my tissue, pick some oil up, come in, and then start to blend those colors. And they just blend seamlessly into one another. Okay. Now when it stops moving like it is here, just go back and pick up a little bit of oil, start on the edge of your parchment, and then slowly work it back in. Nice. It's, it's amazing the colors that you can come up with. Look at that. I've got a real nice, it looks very sort of um, moody, sort of moody clouds, doesn't it? So let's bring it in, see if I can get a better image. So we can see, can we see that okay? Okay, so you can see now. And then what you can do, you can start to build up your colors as well. So you can go back on and get a more dominant color. So for example, if I go and I put a little bit more pressure on now with the pencil, okay. And then I'm gonna take my tissue again, pick up a little bit of the oil. I'm gonna start off on the edge. And what that's doing, and you can't see that, I'm starting off on the edge of the parchment. And what that's doing, that's allowing some of the oil to evaporate. See, and then I can go in, and we can really see now how it's starting to really blend nicely together. 
then I can bring it into the red. Look at that. I really love this. And then that, oh, it's probably a little bit. Oh, okay. What's some of the questions? There we go. Prime to Nancy. Just add another layer when the first layer is dry. There we go, Nancy. And so you can sort of build it up. Now, when we turn it over, we obviously get a, a more muted colorway. Let me see if I pop that underneath. Does that? Yeah, look, even on that, just doing it as a layer behind the card. How lovely does that look? So the, the clear parchment on top, if you're worried about doing it directly onto your art piece, then you could do it onto another piece of parchment and then lay it over the top and you'll get, wow, yeah, you'll get an even softer look. Okay, so that's using the pencils, okay? And you could just spend an afternoon just doing, making sort of just some different backgrounds as well. What was it, what's Karen saying? Karen, it looks like an evening sky. It does, doesn't it? It really does. Okay, so if I bring my, my other piece of uh, parchment in, I've already applied the color to. And this time I thought we'd have a look at the dorso crayons because the dorso crayons are a little bit more intense in colors. Now they all come fully protected in these little sponges. And in the lively colors, you've got a really bright, vibrant colorway. And then in the natural colors, as it says on the back, you've got your more softer tones, but you've also got your white in there as well, which means that you can easily lighten the colors. So if you've got a dark blue here, although you've got a light blue, you may want a, a lighter one, okay, by using the white. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the brights. So, okay, let's have a look. Pick a color, any color. What we've got two, four, six, eight colors to choose from. Okay. And I think I'm going to go, let's go red and maybe a bit of navy as well so we can see the difference. I suppose it's in line with what I was using with the pencils, wasn't it? Now this time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna scribble our color onto our mix mat. Okay, so we've put the, the color on our mix. Now you can see I've still got some oil just there. So we have choices. I could take my spot on sponge and I can pick up some oil and then blend in that color. Okay, and then I can apply it direct to the parchment. Okay. So we've got a nice, ah, oh yeah, you can really see that one, can't you? So you can see it's a lot more intense. There's more, I think there's more pigment in the, the crayons. Or is it maybe they're just more vibrant? I don't know. Okay. So there we go. So we've got our red area in. So now if I put some blue, Oh, look at that, that's a really nice, rich, deep blue. I'm gonna take a little bit more oil, and I'm not putting the oil on the color, I'm keeping it separate. So you may decide, if you've got both the mix match, you may wanna put the oil on one and the color on the other. So we'll take the reverse of the sponge, we're gonna pick up some oil, and then we're gonna pick up the color. Okay, ready? See what this looks like. Oh, look at that. See if we can get a nice blend of the color over there. The blues definitely, considering that's how it started off, how much softer it is when we apply it. So let's try it with a tissue, see if there's a difference. So if I create my piping bag, okay, and we're gonna 
Uh, I need to be careful. I can see that my oil is running off the edge. <laughs> I don't want to get it on my parchment. So you can see now how I can start to, to build up that color and intensify it as well. Okay, just a little bit of oil just to mix it up and take it into that red area. So it's all about having choices in relation to the application, whether you may already have the spot on sponges or you may find that a tissue is more easier and just to, to throw away afterwards. It's entirely up to you, but it's just giving you a couple of variations on a theme. So if I take the purple now, and we'll scribble some purple onto my mat. Let's turn the tissue over. Pick up a little bit of oil, blend in that color. Oh, didn't have enough on there. I need a little bit more oil. There we go. See, and you can start to really sort of bring the colors together. So it's worth having a play on a piece of parchment first to see what color combinations you can come up with. And I mean, I'm not, there's no fault or reason on, on how I'm doing this. I'm just sort of going around in a circular motion just to build up the various colors. Now I could take the color and I could go very lightly onto here, pick up a little bit of oil and then blend it in as well. But what I will have to do is I'll need to use a little bit more oil if rather than use the mix mat because, because you're putting the pressure on the parchment. I mean, there's not a lot of pressure just to get the color out, but sometimes it'll be harder to blend. See, I put too much oil on there, but it'll be harder to blend those lines away. Okay. I really love this, creating this really, it's sort of like a random effect, isn't it? And I'm just gonna take a, a tissue, I'm just gonna mop up that oil there so that it doesn't leak everywhere. But we can see now, again, if I take, ooh, focus. I think the camera is confused. I think the, it, I think the camera thinks that the colors are out of focus, but they're not. But look, when I pop that underneath, you can see how those colors really come in behind. Now, one of the great things about working with the, um, the dorso crayons and the pencils is that you don't have to be precise. So for example, if I had a box that I was working on and I went over the edge, then I can take my eraser pencil, I'm gonna take it out the middle so you can really sort of see the impact. But what I can do now is remove the color. You see? So but if I go over the edges, then I can easily lift that color away. And then again, the same with the pencils. And I could go back to this tomorrow, next week, and I can still lift out the colorways. See? So you can see now, and then when we turn it over, you can definitely see where I've removed the color there. Okay. And then you can see where I've taken the color away from there as well. So again, it's just a couple of, I mean, you're gonna get exactly the same effect from the pencils as you will, I'm gonna move the camera out a bit to stop it, see if it will stop that focusing in and out. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Hopefully that will stop. Okay. And it's all about what you've got in your stash, whether you've got the Pergolina B pencils, whether you've got your Polychromo pencils, 
or whether you've, I mean, I know a lot of people have bought these also crayons and they don't know what to do with them and they just sit to one side. But again, it's just another medium. I mean, we're using pencils and we're using the crayons, but you can also use it with the artistry ink pads as well. But you just need to make sure that the ink isn't too wet. So the best way of applying um, the artistry inks to the back of the parchment is with a brush. And you can just build up that colorway as you go along. So there's several different ways of applying color and adding color to a background in larger areas quite quickly. Okay. How are we doing? <laughs> I hope I haven't confused everyone. <laughs> it's all about, I just want to try and cram as much in and just give people at home, the lovely people that are watching, various options and think, oh, I've got to buy this now. Oh, I've got to buy that now. If you've got the pencils, and I know thousands of you have those pencils, then the pencils will do the job perfectly. It's just showing you another way of applying colour, but in a different method. Different method? Different way. Yeah. Yeah, that sort of, yeah. So if you've got the pencils, then go for it. They're perfect. But if you've got the Dorso crayons that have been sitting in your cupboard for, for years that you bought at one of the open days or you bought online because they're on offer and then you think oh they don't really use them what i mean linda has often used them in some of her projects to create that very subtle background glynis has as well she's done some beautiful pieces um with the dorso crayons so it's just a, another way just see what you've got if you've got the polychromos the faber castell then you're going to get the same result because there's a wax based pencil it won't work with the aqua pencils because in order to get that color to blend, you have to add the water. And especially in larger, you don't want water on your parchment because all it will do is just buckle. So has anyone been giving that a go while we've been doing this? Or am I just doing it and everyone's watching to see where I go wrong, <laughs> what not to do? But you know what? The good thing is you can go back and watch this again and all of our Groovy Tuesdays and all of Barbara Shacks, they're all available on our YouTube channel. Okay, how are we doing for time? Is that really the time? 20 to 9? Wow. Okay. I mean, I've just seen Ken make a comment. <laughs> Brilliant, Paul. Thank you. I now think my dorsal, I now think my dorsal crayons are coming out for a play. But it's not just for parchment. You can use them in other crafting techniques as well. I'm sure they would work fantastically on our coated cardstock. Again, sort of mix it up on a mat first with a little bit of dorso oil and then just blend it and put the color on, I'm sure. And maybe the chromo card, I think they'd work fantastic on there as well. If you've got all these different cards, give it a try and see what happens. It may work fantastically on the stencil card, but for me, I think the stencil card, because it's absorbent, it may not move as well. But what do I know? I haven't tried it on stencil cards, so maybe you could give it a go and let us know how you get on with that. Okay. So, 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 so. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. <laughs> I feel as if I've been talking for the whole of England. Okay. What's Roz saying? I'm colouring using the dorso crayons. Well done, Roz. Okay. Dorso crayons are great on mixed media projects, says Jane Telford. There you go. One of the sort of stampy, arty ladies from the design team. So there you go. Okay. So should we give it a go? I'm going to give it a go on my masterpiece now. Okay. <laughs> and remember, all I need to be aware of... Let me just come into the overhead camera. All I need to be aware of is that if I want to put my base coat of Dorso oil down, as Linda said the other week, you need to stay away from the areas where you've done the shading. Okay, because Linda says, Linda says, Linda says, what Linda explained to us during episode 19 when she applied some color using the, the wax pencils, was that if the dorso oil goes into this area here, 
it can cause the parchment to look sort of pitted and it looks it doesn't look so nice okay so for me what i'm going to do i'm going to use the tissue method to apply a base layer of dorso oil to my parchment first now what i'm going to do see how my parchment's got a little bit wonky so what i want to do first is take a couple of groovy tabs so these groovy tabs have so many uses. So let's get it in the right position. And I'm going to tape my parchment down so it's nice and flat. Now I could do that, or I could take my plate mate and hold it down. Actually, that's a good idea. I could use my plate mate. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in my mix mat that says water. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the oil on here. Because remember these colours on here, I can still reactivate these colours. Okay. They, they could sit on there for months. They often do in my pink bag. They just sit there. And I can go back with a little bit of oil and reactivate and pick up the colours. So I'm going to take some oil. Make sure I've got some in the bottle. Yes. Put some drops on there. Okay, I'm going to take a clean tissue because the tissue is going to give me a little bit more control in applying the oil. Roll it into a point. Now I'm going to pick up the oil. You can see, look, how super absorbent that is. And then all I'm going to do is very carefully apply the oil around the outside. I can go over the lines, but I need to make sure that I stay away from that shaded area. And you can see it, it evaporates really quickly. And you can see how much the tissue is picked up. So just very carefully. I mean, I don't have to go get every piece of the parchment covered as long as I've got the, the bulk of it covered with the dorsal oil but look, you can see it. I'm still going there's still plenty on there maybe I overloaded a little bit too much but you know what with that it's not as if I've got any color down yet is it so we're gonna go around there so all we're doing now is just putting a underlay of dorso oil on our parchment. I think I've covered everything. Yeah, I think that'll do. You know what, it, if it's not perfect because it's just drying too quickly, it doesn't matter because when we blend in our colorways, what we're gonna get is the addition of the oil on the tissue or on the sponge to mix and blend our colors together. Okay. So let's pop that drop of oil to one side. Now what I'm gonna do again, I'm gonna put a piece of white paper underneath, just so you can see a little bit more clearly at home. Okay. And where's my pencils gone? So I quite liked that effect with the pencils and that was using the three different pencils. So it's using the B5, B11, and the B4, okay? So when I'm applying the color, sorry, question from Jilly, am I on the back or am I on the front? I'm on the back, because when I was working with my design, I wrote large on the front of my parchment. But that was a very good question. I didn't explain that at all from the beginning. Because if we were to apply the colour to the front of our work, where the fibres are exposed, where we have the raised lines, then what will happen is that the lines will change colour. Okay. So we're going to take that. So at the moment, it doesn't really look much, does it? I wonder if I come in over here. Oh, that's a little bit better. You can see the design more. 
Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to take the side of my pencil and I'm just going to put some, I'm making sure I'm on the back now. <laughs> That's thrown me. So I'm going to put some color. I'm steering away. I'm going to put my finger there so I don't go near that design. Now I've made it a little bit difficult for myself doing white on white, but I'm doing it so that you can see a little bit more clearly at home. Okay, so I'm gonna put some red there. Maybe I'll put a little bit of red over here. So I can put all my colors down first with my pencils. So let's go with the blue now. Let's pop a little bit of blue. It doesn't matter if I overlap the colors. See? Oops, yeah, you can still see that okay. And I'm just using my finger just to protect my paisley in the middle. And it's all about sort of just having a random color block. Where's that? There we go. That's over there. Put a little bit of blue. Let's put a little bit of blue down the bottom. Down here as well. Okay. So it really looks a complete mess. Okay. So let's now go in and fill some purple in. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm going to live dangerously. I'm going to introduce another color. Don't know what it will look like, but I'm going to do it all for the sake of art. <laughs> it may be the best way to make it look really good. But I'm just overlapping on some of the color that we've applied already. Okay. Come back here, there we go. So just popping that color down. And I'm not worried about going over the lines. Remember, one, because I'm gonna trim this down, but two, I can take my razor and remove the color as well. Okay, so what I reckon, I'm gonna, I'm going to put a bit of yellow in different areas. I'm just going to scribble it all over. <laughs> and this will either look absolutely wonderful or <laughs> absolutely rubbish. But oh, look, I'm looking at this picture that you're all watching me do, and it looks like I, I remember my nieces and nephew when they went to play school and they would draw their pictures. That's what it looks like. <laughs> so I'm not putting much pressure on the pencil. All I'm doing, I'm just using the side of it. Oh, have I got on there? Oh, never mind. There we go. Ooh, bring it back in. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that a masterpiece? Let's turn it over and look from the front. Wow. <laughs> that is totally amazing. Totally. I mean, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful piece of artwork? Now, if you're tuning in for the first time, think, what is he doing? Don't panic. Don't panic. <laughs> oh dear. Another drop of coffee. Okay. But the colour looks nice from above. Oh dear oh dear oh me. Dear oh dear oh me. Okay. So now we're gonna work our magic. I am going. <laughs> oh, I've got the giggles now. So I'm gonna take my tissue and I'm gonna roll it up into an icing bag again. And I'm gonna bring in my oil on my mix mat. 
Okay. Now, I don't want to go straight onto my work unless I want to remove it all. So I'm going to start off on the edge to let some of the, the color absorb. And as I come in, I can see whether there's too much oil on there because all it's going to do is lift away. So I could take another tissue and just blot to remove some of it. There we go. See, look, there's still too much oil on there. See? So even if you think, oh, this looks rubbish. There we go. Mm, not sure. Not sure yet. I bet you're all thinking, what is he doing? Now, because I'm using the tissue, I can get right up to the edge of that design. Okay. So you can now start to blend in those colors. I personally think I've still got too much oil on the tissue. And I'm sure there'll be experts in the building saying, that's not how to do it. But you know what? I'm not going to look at the screen. I can get right into those areas. Still looks a bit at the moment. But it's not over, is it? It's not over. We're going to come in over here. Start to blend in those colours. So what I'm going to do is just take the tissue and just gently go along that edge. See, if I don't like it, I can get rid of it by applying more oil. Now, I can really see a difference now. I wonder if I come in on this one. Look at that. That <laughs> It looks like I've just spilt some paint all over. Okay. <laughs> oh, Linda's in the room. No pressure, Paul. No pressure. I'm not even going to look. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this colour blend is a lot nicer than this colour blend, but it's not over yet. It's not. And I can go right up. To the edge of that paisley design. See, this is where I need to have a power cut now. <laughs> and then redo it and come back. But no, I'm going with it. I mean, look at the state of that. But it's all... And you'll notice I haven't put any more oil on. And now it's actually blending. I'm going to put a tiny little bit on just to get this colour going. There we go. You'll think I had a plan for this, won't you? So I'm going to go right up. I mean, I'm making it difficult myself with the, the white paper on it. Maybe I'll take the white paper out and then it'll be a surprise to all of us what it looks like. <laughs> no, it makes it harder, actually. Maybe I need the light panel on underneath. But then that will make it look even worse. It really would. Just go right up to that edge. What I want to do is just, I want to blend the colours up against the edge. And it's easier for me to do that off of the white paper. Okay. So once... I've gone around the edges of all of these. I'm going to reintroduce the white paper. So gently does it. Gently does it to the edges. Oh, I need to do a bit there. And turn your work so that it's easier for you to see where you're going. A little bit more oil. Okay, I'll probably have Linda on the phone saying, 
Oh, that's not how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it's all about experimenting and see what you get. That's why it's good to practice on a piece of parchment first. See, look, I should have just stuck with the colors, shouldn't I, that I was going with to start with. Right, let's introduce, oh my word. Let's bring that back into play. Pop that onto there. So now I can see where I still need to go in and blend my colors. But the oil is now starting to run out. So I just need to pick up a little bit more. I think it's dried out on the mat as, as well. A little bit more oil. If anything, at the end of all of this, the room will smell lovely. <laughs> right, I'm going to turn my tissue over. I'm going to go to a clean area. Dab off some of the excess on the tissue. And then start to blend in those colours again. How are we doing for time? Oh, you'll be glad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my word. You'll be glad when the hour's nearly over, won't you? You won't be watching this on Rewind. This is how not to do it. But you know what? I'm enjoying what I'm doing. And to me, too much oil. To me, that that's what it's about. You never know, this could be a brand new parching skill that no one's ever thought of or would ever think again about doing. <laughs> oh, see, I like this. Maybe I shouldn't have put, I don't know, maybe I should have just stuck with the blue and the yellow. Maybe I shouldn't have introduced the red and the purple. Maybe I should have just stuck to the plan and gone with the colours that I had when I was playing. But you know what? I'm not. It's not too bad. I can introduce some colour. Let's take. Um, okay, let's take the blue. Let's put some blue back on here and we'll take some more oil, dab it off. Yeah, that really tones that, that brightness down, doesn't it? Okay. Oh dear. There we go. See the, yeah, it's amazing what you can do. It really, <laughs> when you, when you when in doubt, it's not over until it's over, as they say. Okay. And I know it's like when Barb's working on a project and she's doing it, and then when you trim it down, that's when it goes ping. So should we try it? Okay. <laughs> Do we want the big reveal now to see what it looks like? And it is going to look a mess, okay, because what we're going to do, we're going to use that trick with the eraser pencil. So I'm going to put the oil, and don't forget, we're working on the back as well. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to turn it over. Ready? Okay. See, it doesn't look too bad on the front. It still looks a mess. So we've got options now. <laughs> we can throw it in the bin and start again. <laughs> or we can trim it down. So I am going to trim it down, okay? So I'm gonna take my craft knife and my trusty Pergamano ruler, which hasn't got the groovy grip on. So let me grab the groovy grip. So I haven't unpacked from the TV yet, but I know exactly where it is. It's in the bag with my light panel, which I'm just gonna grab now, because I definitely, do not want to slice through my work at this stage. Okay. And I've got a mat 
that I keep specifically for cutting. Okay, so groovy grip on the back of the ruler, steel edge. Okay, let's come up a little bit. Right, I've got everything on the table here. What have I not got out? Nice firm pressure. And I haven't got to cut it first time. Just hit several times. Oh, no, it's done. Here we go. So we've got that on there. Okay. And then to that edge there. And I'm using the, the lines on the ruler to make sure that I'm going cutting straight. This really is really good for your everyday crafting, but especially for your parchment craft with the groovy grip on it. Okay, and then we've got this side here. Okay, there we go, nice and easy. And the last one. And it, it looks really dark and dingy oh. <laughs> on the black. But parchment always does on black backgrounds. Okay. Knife away. So, it's going to look horrible on white. I know that for a fact. Um, but it's just to show how we've got the colours. And the reason it, it doesn't look as nice is because the white on the white, it doesn't really do anything for me at this stage. So I could take, for example, I've got a bit of, I've got a bit of craft card here. I wonder what a bit of craft card looks like. See, on the craft card, it looks quite nice because the white really stands out, okay? And it mutes down the colours, okay? But again, if I take some designer paper, where's my designer paper's gone? Uh, let's have a look. What have I got behind me? Let's go Indian. I've got some Indian summer paper behind me. Okay, so I could take, look. Oh, that's quite nice. I like that. So this is from India. Summer. Now, don't forget, look, you've got the front and the back. So if I, I'm going to put it on white just to show. I'm going to grab a white bit of card. So it, when you look at the color tones, that, look. That's perfect, I think. But again, you can flick through. Oh, that one's missing. You can go maybe with some reds. It changes the look of it again. We can go with some pinks. Oh, that might, that looks nice. I like that. So you have a play and see what papers you've got to lift it up and give it a different look. See, it definitely doesn't look as bad as what I thought it would look, because again, we've trimmed off all that excess. Okay. But just different colorways in the background. See, and I really like this now. I'm really happy with what I've done. And I can still go back in. Ooh, someone's been in this folder. But what I can also do, is I can take my pencils and I can go back in and add color to the areas as well. I know this is gonna be really nice, look at that. This is my favorite one out of this collection of papers. Look at that, nice. Yes, I'm happy now. <laughs> but even on the craft card, I think it looks nice. It's very subtle, um, not in your face. So don't worry, like I did, when you're working. Because obviously, the white underneath, it's always going to look worse than what it is. It's when you turn it over and you introduce maybe another colour behind it. See, I've got some yellow there that I could possibly go back in and blend out. But I can take my pencils, I can take my pens, and I can go in and really bring out these other areas within the design. and breathe. <laughs> that really, in my head, I knew at the beginning of the hour, I knew exactly where I was going 
And then for some reason, I went down that road instead of going down that road. But you know what? I've had great fun working with this. Now, I really want to see if you give this a go, maybe not on your masterpiece, but on another piece that you've been practicing over the past past few months that you think that you're not 100 percent sure on that you think it's not good enough yet to go into a card have a go and again don't forget if you go wrong you can use the dorso oil or an eraser to lift the color off and I'd, it'd be fantastic to see on groovy and clarity worldwide what everyone comes up with and even if you're not 100% sure of it still put it on there because it's great to see you may come up with a different way of doing it and you never know it, just put it out there really nobody's going to say oh that looks horrible and because it's not that type of community people will offer um, help and advice if you if you're 100 percent sure that you don't really really don't like it as barb says we're always our own worst critics so take that step pop it out there so we can all have a look you never know you may come up with a brand new technique so next week if i haven't scared her off the lovely linda will be back in the room with us and we're going to be looking at these plates these are linda's plates so this is the one two three collection so this is the the a4 square ones and i've gone through all the orders that we've had in over the past couple of days and i've pulled out all those orders because I know you'll want these ready for next week so that we can just push them out the door um, and get them to you ready for next week. So Linda is very kindly going to be joining us again next week, okay? And we're going to be looking at the butterflies. And she gave us a, a peek of what card we're going to be heading towards, okay? The only thing I would suggest we have ready for next week is we need, on a piece of parchment, a square. Okay, now if you're a centimeters person, the square needs to be either nine and a half to 10 centimeters square. Okay, or if you're an inches person, three and three quarter to four inches, thereabouts. And if you've got any of the, oh no, it's, oh, I've hidden everything on my desk. If you've got, oh, it says Freya, if you've got the nested squares, from the starter kit just measure to see which one you need if you've got the little one remember i showed you the other week how you can extend it or if you've got the scallop square extension plate then it's the same size as that one in there okay so it's not much smaller than an a6 square but we just need a square just to get us going for when linda joins us again next week so <laughs> i hope you got something from that I've really enjoyed myself today. I've had a real giggle and you know what? That's what crafting is all about. So thank you for joining me. I will see you with the lovely Linda next Tuesday on Groovy Tuesday. I'll be back in the room tomorrow with Barb for um, uh, pop-it postcards. Oh yeah, the colouring of the pop-it postcards. So, um, so if you've got any questions, give me a shout tomorrow. And um, thank you for joining me and I'll see you again next week. Thanks, Jilly, for helping out. See you again soon. Bye. Oh, 